Thank you so much for taking your time and joining us tonight to discover our purpose, calling, and gifts. So before we start, I would like you to take a couple of minutes to introduce each other. Just say the name and the city that you're joining from. And if you're outside of the United States, just say the country that you're joining from. So then we will pray and we will start this course. So I will start with Jack actually because I will, no, no Jack. Uh, Kathy. Kathy is the second nest to me. So I'll start with Kathy. Just say your name and the city and the country you're joining from because we have few international students. So let them hear where you're joining from. Thank you. Kathy? I think, I think you have to unmute your phone. I will unmute here. You don't have to unmute or unmute your phone or computer. I will do it on my system so I can control it from here. It seems like everybody unmuted their phone. Jacqueline, you start with Jacqueline. Who, who's? Hi, it's Jacqueline. I'm from Cicero, New York, USA. Cicero, New York. Welcome. Jack Thompson, Denver, Colorado. Denver, Colorado. Joe with Linda Dow, um, Liverpool, New York. Liverpool, New York. Welcome. Yes, sir. Some of my favorite people live in New York now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Jim? Jim Humans in Littleton, Colorado. And can anything good come from New York? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, who else? Just go ahead, actually, because I cannot unmute your phone from here because you unmuted from there. Gina? My name is Gina Mashinsky. I'm in Clay, New York. Okay, welcome. Thank you for joining for the second kingdom, second round. <laughs> uh, Ken and Lori. Can you unmute your phone? Well, I think we'll learn each other as we go. <laughs> <laughs> I but this is going to take a while because I don't want to waste your time and my time. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for your glory, just like you came down you, the Garden of Eden. Lord, to talk to Adam and Eve, that is your original plan and purpose. Lord, we welcome you to our garden, to this kingdom school. We welcome you, Father, yes. to pray your heart, your purpose. Yes your plan for our life for such a time as this. I thank you for my friends joined from all around the world. Uh, Holy Spirit, we ask for your witness right now yes. in power, mm -hmm. in revelation, and, and in demonstration, deliverance, in whatever capacity that you want yes. to prove, Father, that your kingdom is real. I thank you, Lord, for doing that. We give you all the glory and praise. Every understanding be open, eyes and ears mm -hmm. to be open to hear and to listen what the Holy Spirit wants to say to us tonight. And we give you all the glory and praise. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Thank you for joining. Amen. Let me find my screen here. And we'll jump right into it. <clears throat> So welcome to the Kingdom School Course 2. Some of you already took the Course 1. I highly recommend you take the Course 1, but it is not required compulsory and uh, because it's all intertwined. There are three Kingdom courses. One, first one is Discovering the Lost Kingdom. Second one is 
discovering purpose, calling, and gifts. And the third one will be seeing, entering, and manifesting the kingdom. So I strongly recommend you take these three courses. They are free, but you have to buy the books for the second and third courses because that helps us run the ministry. Your support, your prayers helps us. And also um, to reach more people with the gospel of the kingdom. So these three courses, so you are taking the course number two, which is discovering purpose, calling, and gifts. This is one of my favorite course because why study about purpose? Because one of the major crisis and problem on the earth is purposelessness. People who doesn't know why they are here. And if somebody doesn't know why they are here, they will do anything. They will do any crazy things in the world to get attention, significance, and to survive. So it is very important for us to discover our purpose according to God's word. So the goal of this course is, by the end of this course, you will have a solid understanding about your purpose, recognize your calling, and start developing your gifts. Once you know, once you finish these three courses, you will have an understanding what exactly that you're called to do in God's kingdom and what are the gifts that he has put in you. Then it is up to you to take it from there, run with it till the end of your life. I hope everybody can hear me, see me well. Just give me a thumbs up because I cannot see everybody. Okay. So the part one of this course is discovering our purpose. This entire course is built on one of God's eternal purposes. Feel free to take notes. And once we finish this course, the lesson will be uploaded onto YouTube. So you can watch it anytime you want. I encourage you to watch it more than once. Go over your notes because there's so much in it. And we're just touching the tip of the iceberg and the rest of the things, sometimes you have to research and dig into God's word and the book that you purchased. If you haven't purchased the book, I encourage you to do that. That is required to be part of this course. So the second eternal purpose, we learned about three in the first course. This entire course is built on one of God's eternal purposes, which is everything God created has a purpose, a place, and a built-in function to fulfill that purpose. God never creates something without a purpose. We know that because he is the smartest person in the whole universe. And when God creates something, he defines its purpose right there. He doesn't wait 2,000 years to tell something's purpose. As soon as he creates, he defines, he tells it, what he's expecting, what he created to do. So that's what we are going to learn throughout this course. Why study about purpose? Number one reason, purpose gives us a reason to live. That is very simple. We need a reason to live other than just surviving and to, um, just surviving through life, we need a reason to live and our purpose gives that reason. The second reason we study about purpose is purpose unlocks the key to our provision. When God sent us to this planet to fulfill your purpose, he already provided or, or pro provided whatever you need to fulfill that purpose it is already on the earth. We saw that with the creation of Adam. When he created Adam, God himself came down and planted the garden, put Adam in it. And in that garden, everything Adam needed to fulfill his purpose was there. He, didn't, he doesn't have to go looking for a job to find, to fulfill his purpose. No, 
It is God's responsibility. My brothers and sisters, Holy Spirit wants to tell you, it is God's responsibility to provide for you to fulfill his purpose. That is the number one revelation. God wants you to capture this evening or morning, whatever time zone you are in. We don't, he, he didn't leave Adam stranded on the earth trying to figure out how to live, how to cook something or to plant something. No, it was already provided for him. So the basic thing that you need, everything you need, God, we is faithful. Then you have to take it to the next level. Purpose gives us significance. Everybody wants to feel significant in their life appreciated, needed. We want to feel needed by others that, that require the manifestation of the gifts and the potential that God has deposited into our life. And we have seen in our country recently, people do anything to feel significant. Purpose gives us fulfillment. Whatever you do, when you arrived on this planet earth, your spirit man came with the full awareness of why you were sent to this planet earth by God. Your spirit man was fully aware. Your mind didn't know, your body didn't know, but your spiritual DNA had the complete plan and design what exactly you were supposed to do. Until you do that, your spirit man will continue to cry out. You might be doing a job, maybe five million, making five million dollars a month, but still, if you're not doing what you're born or sent to do, your spirit man will cry out. In your innermost being, you feel like there's something missing that you're not feeling fulfilled because you're not fulfilling your purpose. Purpose unleashes God's favor. <laughs> I like that. Because we all need God's favor. You know the story of Joseph. You cannot destroy the purpose or nobody can destroy the purpose and the destiny for you unless you destroy it yourself. The devil cannot. The enemy cannot. Your friends cannot. Your family cannot. They tried to destroy Joseph's life, to kill him, to sell him to the slaves. But God's hand was upon him. Joseph stayed on the track. Pressures will come. Temptations will come. But as long as you stay on the track of the plan God has for you, nothing and nobody can destroy you because your purpose is indestructible by this world or any forces. So to fulfill that purpose, God unleashes his favor upon you. When you step into your purpose, you will attract God's favor onto your life. Somebody say amen. Purpose is the reason God sent you to this planet. That is the reason you are here. You are not a random being or appeared here just to do something, live for 70 to 80 years, then disappear. No, God sent each one of us with a very specific purpose and reason. And that is our purpose. And purpose is the key to recognizing our calling. The difference, and we will learn that, the difference between purpose and calling and gifts. They are three different things. So unless... First thing is to discover is our purpose. Unless we know our purpose, we cannot recognize what we are called to do. Usually in the church circle that we grew up in, I grew up in, we go after the gifts first. People, people have discovered all kinds of systems and tools to discover, help people discover their gift and tell them this is what you're supposed to do. No, you discover your purpose first then you recognize your calling. Then God has given you some gifts to fulfill that, that, that purpose. So now we are going to go and learn the purpose of creation. Every 
something that God has created as a very specific purpose. So the Bible starts by saying, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Genesis 1.1, that's where we began. That's where I started with my life. I restarted my life there because when I was a teenager, I didn't know my purpose. I was so depressed. I felt so useless. I said this this morning, I say it in different classes. I was not good in sports. I was not good in music. I was not good. I wasn't an average student in the school. So I thought God made a mistake by creating Abraham John. I was so depressed because Bible, the church that I went, they taught me God created mankind to worship him, which is to sing. And I was not good in singing. <laughs> And that gave me more depression and hopelessness in my life. So that's when the Holy Spirit came and told me, Abraham, if you are serious about discovering your purpose, go to Genesis. Start reading the book of the beginnings. Why God created everything. So I went there. I, I, say, I tried to argue with God. Lord, I know Genesis because I studied in Sunday school. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. But he had to start all over Sunday school when I was almost 25. So heaven was created for his throne. Isaiah 61 verse 1 says, heaven is my throne. That is the purpose of heaven. That is God's throne. And he has no plan of sharing his throne with anybody. <laughs> if anybody tried to take over his throne, he will cast them down. That's what Lucifer tried to do it. He tried to take God's throne. So heaven is God's throne. Leave him alone there. That is his place. But the earth was given to the children of men to be inhabited and to rule. Psalms 115, 16 says, The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he has given to the children of of men. You and I are the children of men. This earth has been given to us to manage, to maximize, and to establish his kingdom and his will. Isaiah 45 verse 18 says, for thus says the Lord who created the heavens, who is God, who formed the earth and made it, who has established it, who did not create it in vain, who formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is no other. God created this planet Earth to be inhabited by humans, to occupy and to establish God's kingdom. Then he created the light and he divided the light from darkness to rule over the darkness. The purpose of light is to rule over darkness. Then God created dry land to be the earth, he called it the planet earth that we live, that you see the picture there. I hope you can see the picture. Then God created the firmament to divide the waters from the waters. Genesis chapter 1 verse 6. That is the purpose of the firmament, to divide the waters that is on the earth, that is above the earth. He gathered the waters in one place and called it sea. Genesis chapter 1 verse 10. We are Familiar with it, God created grass, herbs that yield seeds and fruit trees for food. Genesis 1 verse 11 and 12, 29 verse 30, 29 to 30, the Bible says God created the plants and fruit that yield seed for our food. God intended for food to be our medicine from the beginning. Then he created the sun and he told the sun, let it be for signs seasons and for days and years let it be for lights to rule the day the purpose of the sun is to rule the day and to and to decide the seasons that we experience on the earth days and years and months that is the purpose of the sun he created the moon to rule the night genesis 1 verse 14 through 16 he set them in the firmament of the heavens that is the place they are belong Everything God has created as a purpose and a place and a function built in to fulfill that purpose. This purpose is supposed to be so simple and easy. He created the living creatures 
in the waters, the most popular one is fish. They are still in the water. God created the birds to fly. The birds are still flying in the air. Then he created the living creatures to be on the earth. Genesis 1, 24. They are still on the earth. Every dog has the same purpose, which is to bark. We have different kinds of dogs, different sizes of dogs, different colors. But the purpose of a dog is to bark. Doesn't matter how many times you tell a dog not to bark because I have one at my home. Every time somebody walks through the outside, come to the door, that dog will bark. We'll tell them, keep quiet. But the next time somebody ring the bell, that dog will run to the door barking because that is the reason God created that dog to bark. God created every, every monkey has the same purpose, which is to climb trees. That's why God created them. That's why that's where they are there. Every fish has the same purpose, which is to swim in the water. They are still swimming in the water. Every bird has the same purpose to fly. That is the way God created them. They don't go to school to learn about their purpose. But we are in a school right now to learn about our purpose. Why? Because somebody brainwashed us about our purpose. We are relearning through the school. A fish don't go to a school to learn how to swim because that swim was built into that fish. A monkey don't go to school to learn how to climb a tree. That climbing ability was built into that monkey by God, God himself. Dogs don't go to school to how to learn to bark. It comes with their birth. The same way purpose comes naturally, my brothers and sisters. Purpose is supposed to be natural. I have a short video here that I wanted to watch. Hope everybody can see it. Uh, this is about how purpose is natural. Amen. That is just to show that purpose is natural. That sea turtle run towards that ocean. Why? Because that was built into that turtle by God himself. As soon as that turtle was hatched, he knows the direction where to go. He runs towards that water. It came naturally. He didn't go to school how to run to that water. Nobody told him Nobody taught it. It was built in. Same way, our purpose is supposed to be natural. The sun rises every morning because that's how God created it. God put that sun in the sky and it comes up every morning whether we wake up or not. Sometimes we wake up at 9 o'clock 
but the sun comes off at the appointed time and the seasons, it is still doing what God created it to do. Just because Adam fell, sun didn't stop rising in the morning. Just because Adam fell, birds didn't stop flying. The moon and stars are still in the sky. They are doing what God created. Days and season and years still happen. And we just came into the summer season. Some of you like the heat. Some of you don't. I don't like the spring and fall is my are my favorite seasons. The birds are still flying in the sky. 3.30 in the morning, I can hear birds making noise where we are in Colorado. My goodness, 3.30 in the morning, go to sleep. I want to tell them, but they're happy to see the ray of the sun coming up. The fish are still in the water because that's where God put them. That is the place they belong and they fulfill their purpose being there. Trees and plants are growing in the fields and animals are still on the earth. The lion is the king of the jungle. Whatever God spoke over his creation is still true today and they are doing what created them to do except one group of people. <laughs> That's it. That's what we are going to study today. Who are those one group of people are not doing, who have questioned, who has hesitancy about why God created them? Purpose of mankind. That is the first part of this course. Genesis 1.26 is our purpose statement. God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. This is the purpose statement of mankind given to us by God himself. God created us in his image, in his likeness, and he told them, let them have dominion. Dominion means the right to rule. That is the reason God created us. Then there are three fundamental questions that we all have to answer in our life. The sooner we can answer, it's better for us. Or the moment we can answer these three questions, that's when we are ready to live our life. The first question is, who am I? That has to do with our identity. God Almighty answered these three questions in that Genesis 1 26 purpose statement. Who am I? I am created in the likeness and image of God. My identity comes from God Himself. I am like God in my spirit man. I am created in the image and likeness of God the image and likeness of God. We are the image bearers of God and we are like God on the earth. What God is in heaven, we supposed to be doing it on the earth. We supposed to copy him or imitate him because we carry the DNA of God. The second question is, where did I come from? My source. Every human being on this planet Earth ask these three questions. Who am I? My identity. Where did I come from? That's my source. We came from God. God spoke to himself when he created us. Every time he created other things, he spoke, let there be light or let there be fish and creatures in the water. But when he created human beings, he spoke to himself and he said, let us create man in our image, in our likeness. We came from him, God himself. The purpose, uh, the third question is, why am I here? That is the purpose. Purpose is the original intent or the reason of existence. 
three dimensions of identity. We are three parts being, as we know, we are spirit, soul, and body. Our spirit is created in the image and likeness of God. That is the identity of our spirit. Then we have body. We are either male or female. That's the way God created us. That is the identity of our body or our gender. Then we have a soul. The identity of our soul is we have the mind of Christ. That is the identity of our soul. We don't have a stupid brain. We don't have a dumb brain. You know, we have spoke those things over ourselves sometime. Oh my gosh, my stupid brain. No, you have the mind of Christ. That is the identity of your soul. Who is ruling the earth today? Mankind, right? Mankind is still ruling because purpose is natural. Who told mankind it is their right to rule? It came with their birthright. If you look at any country, any nation on this planet Earth, it is ruled by mankind, even though they are under different spiritual influence, maybe darkness or kingdom of God. But mankind is ruling because that is the reason God created them. It is their natural instinct or it is their birthright. How did they know they are supposed to rule? It is their birthright that given to us by God. When God created us, he said, let them rule this planet for me. Actually, we have the freedom either to allow God to establish his kingdom or the allow enemy to establish his kingdom and his will here. How come it has been hidden from us? Why we have been arguing for so long, you know, not all of us, some of us have hesitancy when we say God created us to rule this planet. And we debated about it, we argue about it. But if you look at heathens, people who didn't be, doesn't believe in God, they have no argument about it. They just know because purpose is natural. I wanted to grab that truth with all your heart. Purpose is natural. You don't need to go to university to discover your purpose. Just like I, like I said, other creatures don't go to university to discover their purpose. It came naturally, but we have been informed for so long, 50, 60 years, you're not supposed to do it. It's not yours. It belonged to somebody else. You had to come back after you die. After 2000 years, when Christ comes, then you rule. No, from Genesis chapter one, to Revelation 22, God has the same purpose for mankind. And nobody can change it unless we are deceived by the religious spirit. So the purpose of humans, God created mankind to have dominion. That is a Hebrew word. We have to study. We are going to go deeper into that word. There are 12 definitions of dominion and the process of dominion, areas of dominion. So we are going to have that because that is a powerful key word. Dominion means delegated authority or the right to rule. But we won't all rule the same way. One billion people cannot be presidents in one country or a prime minister, only one person can be the president. One person can be the prime minister, but each of us are created to rule at least one area of life, one aspect of life. And we will learn more about that later. So the Bible says in Psalm 8 verse 6, you have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. That talking about mankind or the son of man, fulfilling our purpose. The entire human race. This is another powerful truth I wanted to grasp. Because when I was, when, when God revealed his purpose to me, it became my passion to help others to discover their purpose. 
I heard great preachers, wonderful men and women of God saying, each of us have a purpose from God. You might have heard that same from others. You might have read books on purpose. It's a big business on helping people discover their purpose, saying, you know, Jerry has a different purpose. Jack has a different purpose. And Kevin has a different purpose. Then Abraham, John has a different purpose. No, every human being collectively has one single purpose, which is to have dominion over the earth. That's our purpose. But to fulfill that purpose, each one of us are called to do something different. That is the difference. We all have the same purpose. We don't have to fight each other. There's no need of division. God created mankind with one single purpose, which is to rule this planet on behalf of him and for him to manage these resources that he has put on the earth. So entire human race, how many billions of people lived on this planet, living right now on the earth and will be living, we all have the same purpose which is to rule this earth for him but as i said each one of us are called to do something different and unique to fulfill that purpose david was called to be a king apostle paul was called to be an apostle uh, peter was an apostle mary um, was called to give birth to jesus esther was a queen moses was a deliverer Joseph was a prime minister. Daniel was a statesman or an ambassador in Babylon. Each of us are called by God to do something different, to fulfill the same purpose we have collectively. Identifying and developing our gifts is the key to fulfilling our calling. Each one of us has gifts and the potential to develop skills to fulfill that calling. Once you understand the purpose, then you recognize your calling, then you identify your gifts or skills. That's how we may need to go to school sometime to develop a skill. If you're called to be a doctor, you need to go to school. If you're called to be a pilot, you need to go to school. If you're called to be um, a farmer, sometime you need to go to school, or if you learn from your, your ancestors, your parents handed over that revelation and the information to you to run a farm, that's good. But we have to keep that in the right order. We will never exhaust our full potential, regardless of how much we achieve or how long we live within the realm of our calling. Within the calling God has given to us, there is unlimited potential. How much you walk in that calling, God will reveal another season of your calling. Never get stuck in one season of your calling. You have to keep moving. What happened with the body of Christ collectively? We did not move with God in the seasons. We got stuck somewhere 500 years ago. The world has gone and leaped into development, but the church is still in the horse and buggy stage in many areas of our life. So that's where we depend on the world for everything. Whatever the world produces, we use it. It's supposed to be the other way. We're supposed to be leaping into the developing, into the innovative, creative ideas of God. And the world is supposed to be trying to catch up with us. And guess where we are? <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Purpose is the big why. Why are we here? That's the same purpose. And calling is the big what. What am I called to do to fulfill that purpose? That's the difference between purpose and calling. Then the gifts are the big how. How I'm going to fulfill that purpose, that, that's how you use your gifts. So purpose is the big why. 
Why am I here? Calling is the big what. What am I supposed to do? I have seen people all the time come and ask me, Abraham, what am I supposed to do with my life? That means they just don't know what they are called to do. Once you're called to recognize what you're called to do, God has given you gifts or at least the potential to develop some skills. And sometimes you have to go to school or a university to do that. Now we are going to learn a little bit about the difference between purpose and function. Sometimes people get confused about the difference between purpose and function. Functions of mankind. Function is built in. Like I mentioned before, the sun that we see up in the sky, God has built in the function within that sun to produce the heat and the light. And it's been doing it for, I don't know how many thousands and thousands of years. That sun is still up there because that function is built in. So whatever you need, however you need to function to fulfill your purpose, it's already built into you. So the difference between purpose and function is, purpose is the reason of existence. That is the main difference between purpose and function is, purpose is the reason of existence. Function is the process built in that help us to fulfill that purpose. We have thousands of functions as a human being. Eating is part of our function, but that is not the reason we exist. We sleep, that is part of our function, but we don't live to sleep. We clothe, we take showers, we clean, we do, my goodness, we exercise, we walk, we do all kinds of functions. But majority of the people on the earth, they are only functioning. They have spent the majority of their time on the function, but they ignore the purpose. So please don't ignore your purpose. Don't just to live to function. Live to fulfill your purpose and adapt to your function to fulfill that purpose. So I have a, another small video here that shows about purpose and function. Hope you can see me and see the video from there. It is a, uh, just want to show you a funny video. a video to show that purpose and function that car was made to race and the functions of that car the engine the the horsepower that was built into it to fulfill that purpose that's how it's fulfilled its purpose and that cheetah that's a creature that runs faster than a race car oh my goodness that is the purpose of that cheetah god built in that function in that animal to to fulfill that purpose. Sorry, I went ahead of okay. So there are eight fundamental functions of mankind that enables us to fulfill our purpose. Number one, mankind was created for relationship with God and other people. 
we cannot function well or fulfill our purpose without having a relationship with God. It's supposed to be propelling us, even people without relationship with God, fulfilling their purpose because it came naturally for them. We are supposed to be much more ahead of them. So every other relationship that we have is a reflection of our relationship with God. How is our relationship with God reflects on how we treat and relate with others, whether it is racial problem in our country, what is the problem? Is relationship with God. Why we cannot accept certain people, certain colors, because we think our, our view of God is screwed up. That is the reason. Number two, mankind was created to work and to achieve. That is the second function of mankind. We love to work. And to be honest with you, God gave man work before he gave him a family. God gave Adam the work to take care of the garden, to tend and to keep it, to expand it, to establish. That's why men are more tend to love to be at work or to achieve things sometime than being with their family. But God created woman to have a relationship. So then the conflict comes. Man wants to be work, 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 work. The woman wants to connect, 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 relationship. <laughs> Some of you parking your husband and wife there. I can see that. <laughs> So God made us differently to balance it. So the woman has to understand man needs to work and the man needs to understand the woman needs the connection. That's why he created us so extreme, you know. Because if for a man, if his work is not going well, he is not happy. Doesn't matter how many women he can have what he can have, if he's not fulfilling what he's created to do, he is unhappy, he's an unhappy camper. But for a woman, doesn't matter how much big house she has, what kind of car the husband bought her, the relationship is not there, she is not happy. <laughs> That's the way the woman thinks. That's the way God created us. So he created us differently to balance it out so we can know the difference. So here says Genesis chapter 2 verse 15, the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden Eden to work. So before most of you in this class are married, I believe. And ladies, I want to tell you, when you meet a man, the first question to ask is, what is your work? <laughs> Work means not a job. There's big difference. I think we learned in the last class. Your job is different from your work. Work is your purpose, your calling. Your job is something that you do temporarily until you discover your work. So Jesus was a carpenter until he discovered his work. That was his job. Joseph, uh, no, Joseph. David was a shepherd. Moses was a shepherd. Joseph was even taking care of his father's business at home until he was sold into slavery by his brothers. The third fundamental function of mankind is mankind was created to expand, multiply, and grow. We are built in with that hunger to expand. Whatever we do, we want to go to the next level. Whatever we do, we want to grow and multiply because if that is not happening, we just feel something is missing. We feel unfulfilled. That is the way God created us to expand, to multiply and grow. The first commandment to mankind by God in Genesis 2, 20, no, 128, be fruitful. Fruitful means be productive, expand multiply and grow. We will learn more about that um, later. We are constantly looking for new horizons to overcome 
new mountains to climb, new oceans to travel, new places to go. That is the way God created mankind and there is nothing wrong with it. I am so blessed to live in this country of United States because this is the most free society. People are always looking for to go to the moon. Then after they go to the moon, they want to go to the Mars. Then after they go to the Mars, they want to go somewhere else. That is the way God created us. But in many society, people are suppressed. They don't have that freedom to express the creativity and the potential God has given them. That is inhuman. Then God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. When he says fruitful, is not just talking about having children. And we will learn more about that in the coming classes. Children are only just one kind of fruit of our body. There are many other kinds of fruit that God wants us to bear. And we will learn that in the next upcoming classes. The fourth fundamental function of a human is mankind was created to manifest the glory of God. What is the glory of God? Romans 3.23 said, when man sinned, he came short of the glory of God. Nowhere in the Bible says when man sinned or fell, he lost heaven. But the Bible says all have sinned and came short of God's glory. What is God's glory? The first time the word glory appears in the Bible is in Genesis chapter 45, verse 13. It's talking about the glory of Joseph. Genesis 45, 13 says, Joseph is telling his brothers, so you shall tell my father of all my glory in Egypt. What was the glory? <laughs> because he was functioning or fulfilling his calling in a maximized state. When you maximize the potential that God has given you, that is the glory of a man or a woman. So Joseph had his glory. He was fulfilling his calling. When you're fulfilling your calling, you're manifesting God's glory through you to the rest of creation in Jesus' name. So I pray that God will restore your glory, whatever stage you are, whatever state you are in life, and whatever age you are in life, you are never late to fulfill the call of God he has placed upon your life. I pray that God will manifest that calling in full capacity in your life in Jesus Christ's holy name. I bless you tonight, and I, I receive that by faith in Jesus' name. That no potential will remain in you dormant. I call every potential gifts and skill that God has deposited in you to manifest in Jesus' name. Each of your life. And don't be shy about it. Let the world know what God has called you to fulfill on this planet Earth. Don't compromise. Don't be afraid of man. Don't be afraid of people. That was one of the greatest fear I had to overcome in my life. It's not the fear of the devil. It's not fear of Satan, but fear of man. Fear of man's criticism, my dear brothers and sisters. I had to throw that out of my life to fulfill the call of God that he has placed upon my life. Because I was trying to copy somebody else. When I saw another preacher, I wanted to be like that preacher. I tried it. It didn't work for me. It, Saul's armor didn't work for me. David has his own sling and the stone. That's enough. If God has given you a sling and a stone, that is more than enough to kill the giant that is challenging you. And that will open the door for you to go to your to, your, to fulfill your destiny in Jesus' name. In your way to fulfill your calling, I was not planning to share all this, but the Holy Spirit is prompting me to say this because somebody in this class needs to hear this. 
on your way to fulfilling your calling, you will need to overcome the fear of man. Satan's fear, you know, Satan will use people to keep you intimidated. But don't give room to people. Not your uncle. Your uncle didn't call you. Your aunt didn't call you. Your father-in-law didn't call you. Your mother-in-law didn't call you. Be free to be who you are in Jesus' name. Be free to be who you are, what God created you to be in Jesus Christ's holy name. The key to fulfilling our purpose is in understanding the principle of subdue. That key word, dominion, then subdue. This is the second word I wanted to grab hold of tonight or this morning, wherever you are. Subdue. Subdue means make submit by force. Dominion means the right to rule. So please keep these definitions very close to your heart. Definition means delegated authority or the right to rule. Subdue means make submit by force. Why it is important in fulfilling our purpose? Because whichever area that God has called it to do, you have to subdue that area. If you're called to be a musician, you have to make that instrument submit to you. The moment you start learning an instrument for the first five days, it will be fun. You'll be excited. The sixth day, that instrument will fight against you. <laughs> you know, it's a lifeless thing. It has no life on its own. But that instrument will try to subdue you, conquer you. At that time, you have to put on that mantle of dominion. Here I come. You submit to me by force. So instead of subduing the area of calling, you know what happened? Because mankind lost their purpose and calling, they began to subdue each other. They began to dominate other people, which is evil. You and I are not created to dominate people. You and I are called to dominate the area of life that we are called to called to fulfill because everything on this earth function under the law of resistance god put that resistance on the earth law of gravity will resist you you want to go to the moon that gravity will try to keep you on the earth so you have to study scientifically how to break the law of gravity that is called subdue make summit by force through wisdom through knowledge, through skill. And that's what God said in Genesis 128. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. God wants us to subdue this earth, its potential, its resources. And each of us are called to subdue one area of life. The sixth fundamental function. I just want to finish this eighth, then we'll finish today's class. Sixth fun fundamental function of human is mankind was created to function like God. Because we are created in his image and likeness, we are supposed to function like him. We carry the DNA of God. What God is in heaven, we are on the earth. He creates and rules. That's the way he does. So you create and you rule over something. Either it's a business, a calling, a gift, or a skill, or a product, whatever God has called you. That's why the Bible says in Ephesians 5 verse 1, Therefore be imitators of God as dear children. Imitate means mimic. That's the Greek word you do. You mimic him. How he does it, you copy it and do the same exact thing. The seventh fundamental function of mankind is mankind was created to manifest and represent God on the earth. We are his ambassadors. 
God wants each of us to be a king over something because we are created as kings and priests. That's what the New Testament, that's what the Old Testament says. We, God wants to, we have people, we have the king of pop music, we have king of rock music. Why they call them a king? Because they rule over that particular area of music. They became a king over it. Second Corinthians 5 verse 20 says, Now then we are ambassadors, means we are representatives of God or for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. The eighth fundamental function of human is mankind was created to glorify God by accomplishing the works he created us to do. That is worship. The greatest worship you can give to God is by fulfilling the work that he sent you to do on this planet earth. So worship, loving one another, prayer, all that part of our function. So man was created to glorify God. How we glorify God? Jesus said, Father, I glorify you by completing the work that you gave me to do on the earth. I glorify your name. That's how we glorify. We glorify God by fulfilling the works he has prepared for us. Ephesians 2 verse 10 says, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand. That good work means not just helping the poor. That's what we think religiously. Good work means help the poor, hand out free food, use to clothes. No, that is charity works. Good work is different. Ergon, that is in Greek, means enterprise, something you do with your hand. That's what good work means. No charity work. That's different. For you were bought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So now we are going to end with here. I want all of you to read this, if you can see it on the screen, and put your name there. When, when it says, let us make Abraham John in our image, according to our likeness, and let Abraham John have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over a creeping thing that creeps on the earth. And we are going to read it together now, then we are going to end this class. So when I say one, two, three, I want you to read, then, then say when it, came, when, it, when it comes to that place, put your name there and read it like you mean it. <laughs> Amen? One, Amen. two, three, let's start. Then God said, Amen. 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 Us to the end Amen. of today's class. Now we have Amen. time for questions, comments, or feedback. So if you have a question or a comment, just show me your hand. I will unmute you. Some of you are already unmuted. Uh, yes, I see you. You're Thomas, right? Yeah. Where are you? Okay, you're already unmuted. So go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, thank you, thank you, sir. We're so grateful. Uh, my, Where are you from? Uh, yes, I'm Thomas. I'm from Ghana. I'm Ghana. From Ghana. Ghana, yes. Accra, Accra, Ghana. In Kumasi, Kumasi. Accra is the capital. I'm in Kumasi. Kumasi, Ghana. Wow. Kumasi, yeah. Welcome. Yeah. Welcome. Uh, thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Now, my question is this: How how does purpose relate to destiny? Well, what is the difference between the two? Destiny is another name for calling. Okay. You fulfill your destiny. You do you do your destiny to fulfill your purpose. It's like you fulfill your calling to fulfill your purpose. Destiny is 
related to your calling, what you are called to do, that is your destiny on this earth. But purpose is same for everybody. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, please. Yeah. 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 So calling, dream, vision, destiny, we call it passion. These are all different synonyms sometimes people use. Uh, but purpose is same for all of us. Calling is different. Gifts are different based on what is our calling is. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have a question or a comment or a feedback? Everybody is quiet. <laughs> Or somebody is some everybody is waiting for somebody to start, I think, you know. <laughs> well, if you don't have any comments or questions or feedback, we will Thomas, yes. Thomas have... Go ahead, my no. brother. Well, now relating to gifts, gifts, how do we relate the gift also to the talents? Gift and talents. How how do we relate that? It's the same. It's the same. Talents, gifts, skills. It's all synonyms. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 Sometimes skill is different. Skill is something you develop. Gift is mm -hmm. something that is given to you. You didn't earn it. You didn't work for it because that's why it's called a gift. A skill, sometimes you have to work on it. Mm. You have to earn, you have to develop a skill. Gift comes to you sometimes natural. We will learn about that later. That's the lesson about the different kinds of gifts that God has given naturally. There are five different okay. kinds of okay. gifts. So we will learn about that in a later, later class actually. So we are focusing mm. on the first purpose now. Then we will go into the calling. Then the third round is gifts. Last one. So we will. My explore. last question. Yes. Okay. My last last question. Now the purpose. Purpose is purpose. One thing that you do, or is something that you do every day to the end. Something purpose is something that you look for. You know, it's it's natural. It's part of who you are. So we do it daily. It's a daily something. Daily is, is daily. unfolds daily. The season your calling unfolds, and your purpose you lived in the last day of your life on the earth. That's mm. your purpose. Okay. Okay. You won't retire from your purpose. That is something mm. I want everybody to hear. This. You won't retire from your purpose. Your retirement in the kingdom is when you fly away, or when you leave this planet. That is your retirement. You go to rest until you can come back. So your purpose continues until your last breath. And even after you die, your purpose will continue because your calling is eternal. And it is season. Mm -hmm. Even in the next life, you will be doing something similar in a different level of what you're called to do. When you come back to rule and reign with Christ on the earth. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That was Thank a great you. question. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate thank it. You. Yeah, thank you. Good so to much. see you actually. I see you on Facebook. Now I see your yeah. face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Thank yeah. you. Well, this lesson will be uploaded onto YouTube channel called The Kingdom School. So if anybody wants the video of this class, you have to go to YouTube and type in the kingdom school which will be uploaded within 24 hours. So please make sure that. Uh, yes, Lori, I see your hand. Uh, in the future, are we going to maybe be going over um, some of the reasons why maybe we haven't fulfilled our purpose at late ages? <laughs> um, things that maybe have prevented us from, from that happening. And I mean, not that we can't overcome that. I totally think we can no matter what our age is, but. Yeah, it's never too late to fulfill your calling. Even if you're 99, yeah. 
-hmm. it's still your calling remains. You know, God never cancels our calling or gifts. In Romans chapter 10, I believe, the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. Means he doesn't take it back. He doesn't, he doesn't cancel it. So whatever happened, like I said before, we came, our spirit man came with the full awareness of what we were supposed to be doing on the earth. But as soon as you landed here, we were hijacked yeah. by another kingdom. So we went to school to learn, to survive, to get a job. Then all this religious stuff was put into our brain. We say, this world is not yours. This earth is not yours. You just wait to fly away. Yeah. So we are retraining us now. Yeah. So at least we should do a favor for the next generation. So that they don't have to go through what we went through in our life. Mm -hmm. That is my passion. That is my heart. So we should set things in order now intentionally for the next generation, the next generation that comes after us. So they will, from the ground up, grow up with the understanding of their purpose, why God put them on this planet Earth. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Okay. I don't, yes, Jared, your mic is well, on. I, yeah, I just can identify with the sister that just spoke about spending many years of life searching for purpose and being in churches and and looking for that support and leadership to know what direction to move in, where to go with what is my calling, what are my gifts, and how to, how to put those things together, kind of a, like a recipe to, to bring something up that looks like my destiny or my, my calling, my purpose. And, and at 56, I'm, I'm still trying to put in the ingredients in the mixing bowl to try and figure out what's going to come out, mm. you know, um, what's that going to make, um, mm. what benefit will I bring to, to either the body of Christ or to the world. And so I think there are a lot of people of my age that are in the same boat trying to still figure it out. So um, I'm very grateful for, for this teaching and for this course. And, and in believing in the name of Jesus, I'm believing that um, I'm crossing over, that many of us are crossing over to the other side to fulfill that purpose and that calling and to um, um, lay hold of that territory that we've been laid, laid hold of for. Um, that's been one of my prayers. Oh God, show me what you have laid hold of my life for so that I can fulfill that and bring you glory and honor even in my last days, although I know I have many days many left. Years, many years, yeah. Uh, but, um, but yeah, I want longing to, just like my sister, I think, I'm longing to fulfill that purpose and that calling even now. Amen. Well, I can guarantee you, you are at the right time, at the right place. Whatever that happened, we cannot change. But you have plenty more years to discover and to fulfill and to manifest everything God has put in you. That's why you're part of this class. That's what I believe, believe and feel in my heart, in my spirit, to all of you, because we are all in the same process. Of us may be a little ahead, but we are still trying to figure out and put together all the pieces and it takes time. Jesus himself, I tell people, Jesus himself three years with the disciples. Why he took three years to train them in the kingdom? He didn't just lay hands on them and say, be apostles, and I impart to you. He could have done that. He didn't say, oh, I impart everything. And see you guys on the other side. He didn't just leave. He stayed and walked with them for three years. So the other thing is we need each other in this journey. We cannot do what we are called to do by ourselves. That was part of the last class or that is part of the calling. 
we need each other to encourage, to build up, because we are all connected in God's kingdom. I need you, you need me. And we need each other. Because we were all so individually, individualistic. You know, I can do this by myself. You know, the society, the culture that we live in, it's all about self-made success. There's no self-made success or calling in the kingdom. It is a family. It is a kingdom that we are connected to each other. We need each other. I need your gift and you need my gift and the calling that God has put in my life. That's the way it works. So I am utilizing the calling, the gift God has given me to share with you. Now, just hold on. By the end of this course, and the next one, I believe you will have a glimpse of what you are supposed to do with your life on the earth for the rest of your life. That's, that's the goal of this course. So just hold on. And it takes time. It's not, I can just push a button and all of a sudden everything manifests. Jesus himself didn't do that. So it takes time. So you are at the right place at the right time. All of us are. I am completely uh, assure about that one. Thank you. Thank you for that great comment. Anybody else have any comments, questions, feedback? Yeah. If not, we are going to pray. We are going to pray for each other on the class today. So I hope we can see each other. Please, the first row, and just, just skim through the screen and pray for each other that God will make the calling and the purpose so clear and calling our DNA, our spiritual DNA to manifest with the names that you can see on the screen. Just pray and bless each other that we will discover our purpose, recognize our calling and identify our gifts that God has given it to us. So just three minutes, we'll take our time and uh, we'll pray. You can unmute your phone because I don't know what happened in my unmute and mute. It's not working because maybe you are muting and unmuting there. I don't have the control over here. So just unmute your phone so we can hear each other. Hallelujah. And pray for each other. God, the Holy Spirit Amen. is so clear to your heart and your spirit, man. Let's go. Yes. yes. Thank Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for my brothers and sisters, oh God. Thank you for the purpose and the calling that you have for each and every one. Thank you, Lord, that you have given to us a hope and a ministry, Lord. Thank you for the blessing. Thank you for the peace, Lord, that leads us and guides us. Opening of our eyes, our spirits, our minds, Lord, our mouths. Thank you, that you will come to a greater knowledge and understanding of our purpose, our function, and lightness, and our calling, Father. We thank you for the revelations that you have downloaded into Apostle Abraham, that you continue to download into him. Father, I thank you that we are able to receive it for this very time and place in history. Thank you for Thomas. Thank you for every one of these brothers and sisters here to give revelation and wisdom for understanding and knowledge they will have increasing and increasing understanding that they will have an increasing and increasing understanding and knowledge for karma thank you bless the bless glory bless Kathy Thomas Joseph Trina Scott, Josh, and Jerry, for Tommy, Lord, and Sadie, and Carmen, and Gina, and Sadie, thank you, Lord, for all of these that you brought yes, together. And John, and Janine, and Jackie, and James, and Jackie, and James, yes, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. For James, and John, thank you for the download and the understanding that you give to us, Father. Lord, to pass our understanding and revelation on to others with more added and each one of us will expand influence in the kingdom with a greater understanding for those around us. Amen and amen. Father, I speak hope to everyone's heart tonight in Jesus' name. No one live 
tonight without hope, Father, infusion of hope about their future. As you say in Jeremiah 29, the thoughts that I think toward you is for peace and to give you an expected end, says the Lord. The thoughts that God think about each one of you. Holy Spirit is speaking right now. Jeremiah 21, 29, 11. Thus says the Lord, the thoughts that he think about each of you is to give you an expected end and a future. In Jesus' name, Lord, I impart those thoughts that you think about them into their heart and spirit right now. I, Im I infuse that hope, the picture, the blueprint, the design that you have written in your book in heaven into each one of their hearts in Jesus' name. And it takes hard work, Father, in our part to maximize, to manage, to cultivate, to bring those skills and gifts out. It's not just wait around and see what happens, but Lord, I thank you for showing us what is the next step that we need to take. What is the next step that each of my brothers and sisters need to take in their life and protect them from temptation, protect them from wrong decisions, and protect them from and heal them from regrets of wrong decisions they made in the past. No regrets in Jesus' name. That's what the Holy Spirit is saying. No regrets. Don't stay in the regrets. I wash those regrets away by the blood of Jesus from your heart, from your memory, from every strongholds that are made in your mind because of those decisions. I wash them by the blood of Jesus. You are free from those strongholds of regrets, of wrong choices, wrong decisions, and, and you think that was a failure. It was not a failure. It was a learning experience for you. It was a costly learning experience, but it was a learning experience. And you are not done yet. God is not finished with you yet. God is not done with you yet. God is going to bring life from the ashes. He's able to call you those things out of nothing when they are not as if they are in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for doing that for each of my brothers and sisters in this class. And they will never be the same again. And we give you all the glory and praise. And everybody said, Amen and Amen and Amen. 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 Thank you yeah. so much. Amen. 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 Please, please read uh, the preface, introduction, and the first five chapters of the book <laughs> yeah. before the next class. So that is the homework, <laughs> the preface, introduction, and the first five chapters. They are small chapters, actually. So please read them, underline, you, and, and write your own notes on it. Whatever, you, whatever the Holy Spirit tells you, then compare the notes that you just heard today. And you can watch this video again on YouTube. Uh, within 24 hours, it will be uploaded. And it, you will see it under the kingdom school. You have to put the there then only you will go to the right channel. There will be other hundreds of kingdom schools up there in YouTube channel. You have to put the kingdom school and you can watch there and stay blessed. Find somebody with whom you can share what you learned. Maybe a friend, maybe a relative, a neighbor walking by, chase them down and say, I want to tell you about your purpose. <laughs> <laughs> I want to tell you why God put you on this planet Earth and share because when you share with somebody, it becomes part of you. Otherwise, just head knowledge, it will vaporize after a few days. When you, when you share with somebody, you own it. So I want you to own this. And when you teach, when you share with others, that's what happens. So thank you. God bless you. That was a great evening. And I will see you next Tuesday, same time, same place. And uh, God's best for, on each of you. And God bless you. Thank you. Abraham. Sir. Abraham. Yes, sir. I've got a testimony. You have a testimony. Great. I do. I do. Um, I'm here in Denver, Colorado. And uh, I drive Lyft. 
And so I had a young man get in the car and he was telling me about his life and, and how things are really hard for him and whatnot. And, and so I just let him talk and then I asked him, I said, tell me about the intimacy of your relationship with God. And he says, well, it's not really that intimate, this and that. I know I should. I, I haven't been to church, but I guess I could go. You know, and he just carried on and on and on. I said, and I just began to tell him, listen, I need you to know this, but God loves you unconditionally. And in that, I began to tell him about why he put, put God put him on this earth. God put you on this earth because you have a purpose. Do you know what that purpose is? No. I said, I began to share with him God's purpose for you and everybody else, like you've been talking about, is to administer and represent his kingdom here on this earth. That's why Jesus said to pray this prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And he said, okay. And so he just, he was really, really interested and I just continued to talk to him. And then I says, you know what? Here's the next thing, is that once you, once you learn what your purpose is, then you can find out and discover your calling. And he's like, okay. And so do you know what you're calling? He says, no. Well, let me help you with that. Your calling is literally defined as employment. I pulled that up out of Strong's, the Strong's Concordance. And I said, it's employment. It's really heavenly employment. It's the employment that God predestined you to have. So you can never get fired from your employment that comes from heaven. Mm -hmm. And he said, man, that's amazing. I said, <laughs> now check this out. Do you like how things are being run on this earth? He says, no. Do you like how our government is being run and the decisions that they're making? No. Do you like how things are being handled in the state? No. Do you like the decisions they're making? For instance, this mandatory injection? No. I said, do you like the education system and how they're doing things? No. I said, who knows? You may be called to get in a position to make different decisions based on righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost all steeped in the love of God. He was like, man, I needed this ride. <laughs> <laughs> so I just wanted to share that with you guys. Be encouraged because this thing is really causing all the pieces of the puzzle to come together for me. And, and I can literally just sit down and start talking to people about it. And I'm not sure if you're there yet, but you will be. And it's so exciting. It's exciting to hear, listen, the reason that all of the problems we're having on this earth is because we are not standing up and doing what God called us to do. Ooh, Jerry. I think it's about <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Bad so boy. That's excellent. Thank you, Jerry. Good job. Well, I, yeah, I, come I, on. I know, go, but I know we're trying to leave, and so God bless you guys. God bless you guys. Thank you for that time. I'll see you next week. Thank you. Have a good okay. night. Good morning.